What's up, everyone? Today, I couldn't be more excited for maybe the best podcast episode we've ever done. My guest is Trent Snyder. He's on very little sleep, but I'm excited because we're going to have someone on who is actually in the trenches trading this stock. Yes, we're talking about game stock. You see on CNBC, you see on that mainstream news, you see everyone who's an expert, but we've got a millennial living it right here, Trent Snyder. Yeah, hey, how you doing, man? It's it's been it's been a crazy couple of days. You know, I actually I'm actually uh I'm I'm in and out, but I'm in it now. You know, I'm a believer. I'm in the trenches. I'm I'm with WSB, I'm with everything. We're 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 trying to push this. We're getting that squeeze. Yeah, I want just take me through your journey, man. I want to hear about I mean, you haven't slept and has it been more than 24 hours? Yeah, I took like a little bit of a, a two hour nap maybe before I had to start work in the morning. But um, it all starts like maybe, you know, 38, 40 hours ago, um, Monday, Monday morning, you know, uh, I had a couple friends that were a couple coworkers and they're they're kind of getting into GameStop, you know, and and, you know, I don't usually trust like Wall Street bets with stuff, you know. And let's tell uh, everyone what Wall Street bets is. It's a uh, it's a channel on Reddit that is basically trying to pump stocks. Yeah, yeah, it's a subreddit that you know. I wouldn't say that they're 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 trying to pump and dump or anything like that, but they they definitely uh, there there's a lot of individuals on there that 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 are actually like pretty smart and they all try to like give good analysis. But sometimes it's just hype, you know. And right now, I think we're we're really coming off one of those. Okay. Hype. So you got some buddies and you work in the gaming industry too. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a software developer for, uh, for 2k. So we make like the basketball video games, but, um, so my friends were getting in and one of my friends, you know, he was getting in maybe like $40 and I'm like, dude, I, I've been watching GameStop over the last couple of weeks. And there was some news, you know, they got the, the guy from Chewy, you know, uh, the, I forget his name. Right. I mean, the stock was at less than $10 just a few months ago. And now it's in the three hundreds, but you got a buddy you got in at 40 ish. Okay. Yeah. And he was getting in, he was telling us about it. And I was like, man, dude, you're full of crap. That's, that's not going anywhere. There's no way that, that that's going to shoot right back down and it's going to be terrible for you. And then my other friend got in at 90 and I was like, man, I just, I don't believe it. I'm, I'm not bought in yet, but, but, but see, I was wrong. Cause I, I didn't, I didn't read up on so it. So when did you finally jump in? Yeah. So that was Monday. And, um, at the end of Monday, I think it closed around like 90 ish. I'm, I'm not sure the exact numbers for Monday, right. but, but Tuesday, Tuesday was when I, when I got in because, uh, I started to see the stock was, I, I read, I read up on it, you know, and I was like, you know, it is, it is kind of a gamma squeeze, you know, we got some interest going on. We have, and let's of- explain everyone. So a gamma squeeze is basically a short squeeze when there's no, the, the people who are shorting the stock, which means they're betting it's going down. They don't have any stocks to cover their short. Yeah. So no one's willing to sell to them. So the stock just keeps shooting up. Am I describing that correctly? Yeah. 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 And, and it's, it's the part of the squeeze where the, the, the shorters themselves aren't really technically buying all the stock back yet. Right. Right. So, um, so I was like, it, it felt like an easy trading day to me, you know? So I, what I did is I, I started off and, um, I was just kind of doing some day trades, riding up the, 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 riding the gains and getting out at the dips, you know? Um, and at the end of the day, I had made like, you know, just a little bit of money. And, and I, as, as I was reading throughout the day, I just kind of started, it's like, it's, it's hard to describe it. And Dave, it's like, it's kind of like a movement going on, you know, it's, it's <laughs> right. Uh, this is in, we're getting this from you right now, Trent, this is, a lot more. This is personal to people. And this yes. is almost like spiritual to people. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, there's a, there's one of the top posts on um, the subreddit for wall street bets right now is, is some, someone talking about, uh, you know, how their family was basically like destroyed in the 08 crisis when, when wall street got bailed out and, you know, and then they're like, you know, Hey, I, w- what about the little guy? You know, I think, uh, Chamath was talking about that on M- 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 or MNBC, uh, earlier, but, Um, it's just kind of crazy right now because there's, uh, it's almost like, uh, a war against, uh, I mean, I say the establishment, but it sounds dramatic, but it's just, it's just kind of these, these funds of wall street that, that the retail investor has felt for so long that, you know, we can't beat the system because the system has been made for them, but now we're using the rules of their own system against them, you know? Right. So you take all that in and you had just been trading and then what mm-hmm. changed? You're like, I'm in this, I'm in this. It for was those around, reasons. 
Yeah, yeah. It was around maybe like 1 a.m. I think uh, Weeble had just opened trading. 1 a.m. today? Yeah, 1 a.m. this morning. Okay, and it's like 9.30 right now for those who are keeping track yeah, of Yeah, yeah. And um, the man has not slept. And I just, there's something that came over me. I, I had put my gains back in um, at right. whatever the closing price was. I think it was maybe like 150 or I don't know what it gave me. And then um, it started shooting up from 200, 210, 215, you know, and I, I just kind of like, I was like, you know what, you know, screw the shorts. I'm all in, you know, I, I, <laughs> I'm going to go all in. So I put, I put my, you know, whatever my, my little Weeble portfolio in there and, uh, and I rode that whole night, you know, you we put your to- entire trading portfolio, obviously not your whole net worth, but whatever you've dedicated yeah, to yeah. put it all in. Mm-hmm. And before um, you're just trading with part of that m- amount of money. Yeah. De- well, I was trading with the, all of it, but I hadn't actually put the whole thing in and waited, you know, I was actually right. trading. I was, um, but so that, that night was just kind of insane. You know, we rocketed up to 350 and then we shot down to 198. You know, I was down, you know, you know, 20% of my portfolio and then it's coming back. It came back. We finished the, the morning, we hit 380 and then it came back down to like 300. And then the rest of the day has been, there, there's this sentiment um, that's going on it, throughout, you know, the Wall Street betters. Uh, you know, I don't know how to describe this, this kind of crazy thing that's happening, but um so when we have those peaks like we there's a peak on monday uh which i believe it hit 150 or something and came back down and uh, the people at 150 you know they're bag holders now they're screwed you know and uh there's a sentiment around everybody that we're gonna go get those boys you know we're gonna go get them we're gonna, we're gonna go rescue save them. them yes i remember push- i mean just a couple of days ago we were talking about it on, on one of the on one of the subreddits it was like we're gonna rescue those boys who were stranded at 150 when it went all the way back down to the 70s yeah. And now, and we rescued those boys, just like we're going to go rescue the boys at 380, you know, the, the ones at 350. It's the, the, it's weird because, you know, we're not sure what, what is going to happen. Like, but, but I think most people are in it for the long haul. And every time we go and rescue, you know, those people at 150, those people at, you know, who was ever 200 something, you know, when it go when it dips, it, whenever you go and rescue that, it builds confidence from the outside investor. You know, so people that are watching from the sidelines, you know, they see that happen and they see us blow past like the the kind of wall that we hit before. Um, the retail, you know, investor, you know, everybody on Robinhood or Webull or whatever that hasn't that hasn't quite bought in yet, you know, they kind of buy in a little bit, and 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 I think it's it's part of this. Uh, this kind of, you know, F you to the, to the, to the, the establishment. Right. And the establishment establishments freaking out. How, how are the people on Reddit handling that? How are, I mean, obviously they're making memes and saying F you, and we're going to take down the hedge funds, you know, Melvin capital, um, which is their number one targeted hedge fund that they're targeting right now is down 3 billion just on GameStop alone. They're targeting them on AMC. I guess they have a huge short position on AMC and, uh, I, I'm just wondering how you and your friends and different people investing in this who are so plugged into this, how are they taking uh, what the me- all that the mainstream media is throwing back? And yeah, yeah, it's kind of wild, you know, because um, uh, being being like who I am, I haven't experienced, you know, the 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 distortion of the media for like events in in my personal life, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and seeing like, uh, seeing how, especially like this morning, you know, they're, I guess a little bit yesterday too, where they're kind of, you know, demonizing the subreddit, you know, these, these lazy, like stupid kids, you know, on, on wall street bets, just, just trying to, uh, it, it just kind of was crazy seeing what, uh, the influence of these companies was, you know, and, I think for the most part, everybody is staying strong. Like there was one really, really scary moment. And um, it was around uh, four o'clock today before uh, aftermarket closed. Um, Wall Street Bets has a Discord and Wall Street Bets has a uh, Reddit, obviously. And uh, right at the same time, almost, almost simultaneously, they both were like, inaccessible um the discord i believe it ended up uh 
I, I think they were getting flooded by like, you know, bots that were posting really bad stuff or something. And then so Discord just shut them down altogether. And then for Reddit, we're not really sure. I believe the mods turned it off for right. for a little bit, but I'm not, you know, we're not people who run sure the feed happened. turned that off. But with Discord, which is like an audio chat, um, yeah. social media, they got banned. Yeah, yeah. So basically when that happened, everyone started panicking and there's this massive dip, you know, there was this huge dip. I think it was from 400 down to maybe like, or not 400. I think it was from 300 down to maybe two or one ninety. I think we hit 190 in about, I would say less than five minutes. You like, you, we're just, you know, we're sitting here and we're watching the tickers all day, you know? And then all of a sudden it's just like, you know, you see these candles like boom, 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 boom. And everybody's like, they can't go to the Reddit you know, they couldn't go to the discord to see what was happening. And it was just kind of a, a wild ride, but then, then, then it came back and we blew back up 300 and it, it just kind of, I think it shows that, uh, even though the, the funds are kind of attacking, you know, what we're trying to do here, uh, that, that we're, that the correct amount of us are in it for the long haul and are trying to get that, that full squeeze, you know? Yeah, but what is the end game? Because originally a lot of people talked about Friday as the exit point, but now I'm seeing a lot of posts in in the Wall Street Bets uh, subreddit that it's going to go beyond that because the way the short interest works is that they're not going to be able to cover it all by Friday based on the amount of outstanding short interest. It's going to take them into next week, and it may actually peak next week. When do you? How do you see this ending? I mean, no one knows. Yeah. Yeah. So at each time, each time it hits a new peak, you know, there's like, there's always that little nagging voice that's there, you know, that's take profit, you know, get out, get out. You, you, you did Look it out for you yourself. Know? Yeah. Like this is, th maybe this is it. Maybe this is the peak when it starts going down. You're like, is this the sell off? You know, is this the time? But, um, I think we'll, we'll know. I mean, I, I, from looking at, um, I think VW and 08, right. That was the, the last big short squeeze you, you, you see, you kind of know when it's happening by the 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 amount of shares that are going and the volatility of how like prices are jumping right now but i believe in 08 it was just it just skyrocketed so i feel like when the peak is isn't as important as just getting to it you know cuz cuz right now i think each time like the price gets attacked and it it falls all the way down you know we lose some of uh, some people that were that might have just hopped on or might have been holding for a long time and don't want to lose any more money. And I I think the most important thing is that that we just need to hold. You know <laughs> that we need right. To hold. It's such a social experiment, and mm -hmm. and people have talked about this. Is that um, it's this decentralized almost hedge fund against the Wall Street hedge funds, and the show, social experiment is it's your greed versus your fear. It, well, those two emotions, like if you aren't afraid to sell, there's almost limitless upside and you don't have the greed to sell. So it's really interesting. The main question is, will it break? And if it will break, when would it break? Yeah. Uh, so, so the end game wise, I really like, we're hoping for Friday. Like I, I don't, cause what would happen if all of a sudden, you know, they started buying back all the shares tomorrow, you know, but it, it's just, I'm not sure what, they're going to do because they obviously don't want to lose all this money. Right. So, so I think they're, they're going to try to do whatever they can to either, you know, drag this out, prolong this. I mean, there was talks about like banning us or like banning, banning us being able to talk about the trades and stuff on, on Reddit, but it's and how just, does that feel to even have that conversation taking place? I think it's just hilarious. It's so silly and kind of hypocritical because we are kind of like a crowdfunded hedge fund almost, if that makes sense. And, and we're not doing anything that isn't in the rule book. You know, when you short a position, you understand that the risks are immense, right? That you could be squeezed and have limitless loss, unlimited loss. Yeah. So, so all we're doing is what they do all the time. So I don't know. As, as far as end game goes, I, I, I'm not sure what I personally am going to do because the thing about, we want to talk about it as like, we're this big conglomerate of people, you know, apes together strong is my favorite, my favorite meme. To That's come your out favorite of this. meme. Okay. 
yeah because because it's just it's so silly it's the with it's the a little full, gorilla it's this full <laughs> metaphor monkeys. of the planet of the apes you know rising up against it's against the the hedge fund <laughs> capitalists but um it's just i i think that i am going to hold until i see like the highest peak possible because at this point um I have most of my my earnings back into the stock and like a little bit of my regular portfolio in because I bought back in mm-hmm. and um, I just kind of want to see it out. You know, I think this is historic. I think this is kind of a, a once in a generation kind of thing that that's happening here. And and I think the consequences from it could be really cool to see like the, the best case scenario is that, oh, we kind of change how uh, hedge funds might do, might look at risk management for, for shorting companies, right? And that might save some, some companies that are like teetering and that, that get shorted out of existence or something like that. You know what I mean? So I think that that's a positive thing. And uh, I want to be in, I want to be in it to see if we can make that happen. So, so as far as end game goes for me, like I'm going to get out, you know, whenever, it kind of feels right but i'm not wait i'm waiting until after like you know the biggest peaks and the the the, the wildest <laughs> things happen because I, i'm on the roller coaster and i want to i want to be be on it till it's done yeah it seems like it's become more than just a trade for you i mean that's interesting you talk about the short squeezes and the hedge funds going under um you know melvin capital today cnbc was putting out that they had fully exited their short position and then you go on uh, the Reddit, the Reddit page, and everyone says that's fake news. And there's good arguments on both sides. Do you think it's true that Melvin Capital is actually out of its short position? I think that it would be so crafty. It would be so Wall Street if they if they managed to like sneak out on Monday by doing something weird. But the, the fact is. I kind of take uh, Wall Street bets aside on this one and saying that I just don't feel like it could have happened because because the wording was a little whatever and the, the reporter reporting it was even worse. Oh man, I don't even want that. Up. He was like shaking. It was it was crazy. I don't know. They they had his mother or something, but uh-huh. um, he uh, I don't think that we had especially like the volume on Monday to 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 justify saying that all like so say we the short interest I believe uh, we're pulling the stats from I think the beginning of the month right it's and it was like one hundred thirty five percent right right and so say Melvin Capital is out and or you know say whoever whoever has been shorting is about out fifty percent right. That's still eighty five percent of the game stocks uh, shorts that haven't been uh, finished yet, right? Right. So I would say that even if they were out, I think there's plenty more. Right, that and that's in. what people are saying is even if they're out, there's many more in, and the float act the short float might actually be higher than it was before, which means there's more people shorting the stock today than there was two days ago, three days ago, four days yeah. ago. So it's which escalating, is, which is even more exciting because then all you really have to do is hold. <laughs> well, no, be, that's really interesting. I think there's in a free market, that's true. But people mm. are saying the only reason people would take up this much short interest when it's sort of set that it's going to keep skyrocketing is that people believe that the government's going to step in mm. or Wall Street's going to step in and that the little man's going to get screwed. I mean, yeah, there's a real possibility for that. I mean, what do you I think? I think that there would be, I mean, yeah, I, there'd be some very upset people, you know, I think if that, if that happened and, and you think it would escalate into something else. Yeah. I mean, this is the best Occupy Wall Street we've ever done. Right. <laughs> right. But it's it's uh, been more effective than that one for sure. Yeah. So I, I think that, I mean, the government could definitely step in, but it, it'll be really interesting to see how, how everybody kind of approaches these next couple of days. Right. Because once, once it starts to happen, uh, it's like the monsters out of the box, right? So, I think on Friday, uh, that's the big day to see if, um, like, I think tomorrow there's going to be some whisperings about like, oh, the government might do this. Oh, GameStop might offer a lot more shares or something. And I believe that uh, come Friday, I think is going to be the big kind of crescendo of this whole this whole thing here. Because that's when the options expire. I know there's probably a lot of people listening to this who may not follow all this trading stuff so closely. So I know it can be confusing, but we're trying to explain it. I mean, Trent, you just 
got into trading less than six months ago. I mean, how has this journey been for you and how have you perceived the stock market? Everyone talks about it like you need a finance degree, this or that, you're computer science. How do you perceive the market as a millennial coming in with all this new technology? Yeah, I think the most important thing to remember for anyone that's that's you know in Wall Street bets that that bought a bunch of GameStop because you know their friend's friend told them to, or they saw the ticker and it was freaking out, so they 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 saw it got suspended three times in one day, and you know they want to just hop on the train. I think the most important thing to remember is that this doesn't reflect like the real market. Uh, one of the sl- <laughs> one of the slogans of Wall Street bets right now is kind of like. I like the stock and it, it's supposed to be like the all encompassing uh, sentiment that like the stock is the price that we perceive it to be rather than what it actually should be. Which is crazy. Cause that's a hundred percent true for Tesla. Fundamental yeah, and, and analysis and in, in and this market is out the window. And we're seeing, and we're seeing more kind of a example. rise of this, like, I don't know what to call it, but like fundamentalist, <laughs> approach uh maybe maybe some people would call it like a hype approach to to buying stock and um because because the common man has so much greater access to it through apps like robin hood and webull uh then 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 in the past i think a lot of money is getting thrown around in places that uh you know big wall street isn't expecting or shouldn't or thinks that it shouldn't be, you know? So I think- And logically, it probably shouldn't be. Exactly. Like everyone who's investing in it says like, hey, we recognize this isn't a good business, but also, hey, I like the stock. I like the stock. I like it. And that works for GameStop, but but it's not going to work all the time. So I think the most important thing that that I'm I'm trying to remember, other than the fact that, you know, uh, to keep these kind of hype trains in line. I mean, I was, I was on Palantir like uh, a while back. That was another stock that was kind of wall street bets pumped and uh, you know, made me a good little bit of money um, is things like this can pay off, but they can also go really, really bad. Um, and to, to really just kind of uh, step back and make sure you're doing what's right for you know your portfolio and stuff like that. Um, the way I see the market hasn't, hasn't really changed. It's just, especially because this feels so much like a, a one-off in my mind, you know, um, I don't think this is going to happen again, especially uh, I don't think the uh, hedge funds are going to let it happen again. You know, I don't think we're going to see any, you know, 130% shorted stocks in the near future. Um, but I just really think it uh, for the common investor, you really need to, to think a lot more today about uh, the retail investor and where, cause we can, we can, we can pump and dump GameStop to, to $380, you know? <laughs> GameStop slogan, power to the players. Power to the players, you know? And and I personally don't love GameStop as a company. You know, they they took my consoles for like $5, you know? But, <laughs> but you know, I might go buy a game or two <laughs> across the street tomorrow. But, uh, right. yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a crazy wild ride. And I think the market is, um, is watching, I think, is the important thing. And I think they want to see what, what's going to happen here. Right. So you use Webull and Webull has the best probably after hours trading and pre pre hours trading. Mm -hmm. So you're up at like 1 a.m. this morning. Take us through the highs and lows of those early morning hours, those late swings. I want I mean, I want to hear the emotions. What goes through your head as a new trader? I mean, you're pretty fresh to this. What does it feel like? This has probably been the most uh, meaningful, crazy, stressful, exciting trading experience you've had of your short lived trading career. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I would say that trading, uh, actually trading, uh, yesterday during the day was a more, uh, impactful, uh, experience to me as a new trader than the night because the, the night was kind of more like a hype social experiment where, where you don't know when the floor is about to get taken out from you, you know, whereas, whereas when I was trading, uh, during the day, you know, I can set my, my stops and my takes and I can, I, I have my own rules that I can play by while the stock's going. And did you feel there. like you were in a good place and were able to follow that pretty well? Oh yeah. During the day, definitely. I mean, but there's the thing- always going to be moments emotionally that challenge you as a trader. Oh, a hundred percent. Uh, when, the thing about the, the this experience with GameStop that I haven't had the same experience trading any other stock with is how fast the tickers are moving. 
is kind of like I couldn't place limit orders sometimes because I would want to be buying and the price would be shooting up like too fast for my limit order. Like I'd have to keep, keep, you know, dragging the limit up and up and up. And then by the time, by the time I, uh, I get there, it'd be, it'd be the price I wanted to sell at, you right. know? So, um, I think having to react to, to that, you know, there, I was using, uh, more market orders, which is even scarier because you don't really want to do that. Um, but because it could blast up 10% higher than you thought you were buying mm-hmm. the market order at. Yeah. So, so, uh, that was, there was a couple of lessons I learned there. I think I lost money on, on one of the market orders that I did because it gave me, you know, whatever the, the top order was at the time. And right. I, I, it was, it was enlightening. Um, but, but the nighttime was more of just a, a wild roller coaster. I was up from one all the way through till, um, uh, I think around 8 AM. And then I took a nap for like an hour and then I got back up and I was through 5 PM uh, for through after hours, you know, on Weeble. So that's like a whole 16 hour trading. Actually, that's more, I think. Oh man. <laughs> but you've made money to make it worth it. Right. Can we at yes. least say that? <laughs> yeah. 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 So the thing is like, I'm in it and I'm so excited about this, but, but I, I have so much more respect for, for, cause there are a lot of people that are in it with a bit with like their actual portfolio. So what I did was I traded up and I made some money off the trades and then I took my profits and I put it back in. And then, uh, now I have basically, uh, an egg of my profits. So I'm playing with the house money and I put it back into GameStop to try to try, try to ride this out and see where it went. And there's a lot of people that are just in it with their profiles, you know, that just, that just said, wow, yeah. I'm putting all of my stuff, all of my eggs in here. And, and I really respect those people. Cause that's, that's a, that's a lot to, to, to put on, on this, this wild event that we're having. So do you think that because you just had your, uh, what the house's money on it, you're not as emotional about it, or do you feel pretty invested or do you feel invested for the people that have their whole, whole portfolio on it or a little bit of both? A little bit of both because so overnight I got caught up in the hype last night. I had, I had well, it was maybe... very dramatic. I mean, it went all the way up into the 200s and then way back down. I can't remember because it's always changing how the highs and lows are each day. But oh, yeah, yeah. Can... Last night it was it was up to 350 and then down to 198. I, I remember you think part of that was that Robin Hood doesn't have as early hours. I mean, we talked about that, but uh, oh, well, I mean, like I was frothing out of my mind. I I was I was posting everywhere like everyone hold the Robin Hooders are coming. You know, they're they're going to come. They're going to come. Push <laughs> Where are you back posting? In... Are you on Reddit? Are you on? The yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm in there. I was in there. Uh, and reddit i have like a discord with my friends um right but so the reason i was invested last night was because i had my house money in there and then i put my whole profile in there yeah which is crazy that's when you feel the emotions right that's when it kicks in and that's when it is emotion because you don't yeah you know because because it went all the way up to 350 and i'm on cloud nine i'm up you know i'm up 50 percent and then it goes all the way down and I'm down 20%. And then it goes all the way up again. And, and, <laughs> and I sold it, I think 380, which happened to be the peak of the night. And, uh, and then yeah, I took all, all day, my- you were texting me some of your trades, you hit some pretty perfect trades that is not all skill. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got my timing was, I, it was the second peak. And, and honestly, I, I, w- I had been so emotionally scarred from the first one that that was why <laughs> I, I, I came out there. And then when it came back down and kind of settled, I bought back in with all my profits. So now I have that nest egg in there. But but during that amount of time, I was I was stressed out of my mind. Did it feel like a long time? Did it feel like the seconds were years? Or I mean, what what did it exactly feel like to you? Or did it just feel like just huge emotions inside of you? It was it was uh, I would say it came in waves because I, I would have the ticker on the side and you know maybe some chats and. Uh, I'd have like, you know, uh, a Netflix stream going or something and just having the ticker in the corner, you know, right. I'm not just going to sit and watch the ticker for 12 hours, but uh, <laughs> someone's doing that. <laughs> but, um, but like, I, I'd, I'd like pay attention to, I'd see the ticker and then all of a sudden, you know, it'd be, it'd be like a whole 10th place out of place or something like I would just be the candle would be gigantic and red going down or the can or we would start shooting all the way up. And it's just, it's this, it's this gambling euphoria. That's kind of like when you see the slots hit seven, seven, seven or something, you know, where mm-hmm. it's just this, this like bliss of, of 
kind of succeeding, you know, and, and then that, that, that horrible feeling of uh, kind of the bottom falling out when, when it starts to dive. And when you see, you know, that green turn to red and uh, I'd say it comes in waves cause it'll, it'll settle and then it'll jump and then it'll go down and then it'll jump and then it'll settle. It's just, and there'll it's, be times when you'll talk yourself in like, yeah, it's going to go down here. I'm ready for it. Or, okay, here we go. And then it pops and you don't feel it. But then there's other times it'll surprise you. I was down 20%. And I thought to myself, I was like, you know, I can, I can just, just get out now and and it's totally fine. You know, I'll be, I'll be okay. And I, I, something happened and I was like, you know what? We're in it. You know, we, we got to screw these shorts. I'm, I'm sticking in and I'm holding, I'm That's holding. Where the meme comes in the power of the meme. You told me. Yep. It's the power of the meme. It's the, it's this, it's this crowdfunded kind of spirit that we have going on. And, and uh, like, I feel connected to these crazy idiots that I don't right. know. But I think if there wasn't all those crazy idiots who felt connected in the memes to connect to you and kind of the faith of the group to talk to each other, a lot of people would have been broken and would have hit that sell button. A hundred percent. And we saw that when they took down the communication channels, you know, once those were gone, everybody started panicking and, and it was this kind of pandemonium. So, so it's just reminding yourself to have, you know, diamond hands and kind of keep, keep holding, keep holding. <laughs> I love it. Diamond hands is another saying they got in the, in the chat and it is back online. Anyone can go in, check it out. It's very interesting. It's not we'll perfect. Off- what? It's not perfect. <laughs> right. But what's interesting is they describe themselves as like 4chan found a Bloomberg terminal, right? That's at the top. But yeah, you seem to describe it like it was a lot worse before. It seems a lot cleaner now. I mean, or it just wasn't as bad as you described it. Cause I only started yeah. looking at the, I mean, you go through the discord and, and there's a, and there, there, there was, I guess, cause it, it got banned, but um, you know, there'd be a lot of like questionable posts. They have some, some rules that, you know, maybe I wouldn't agree with that are, that are memes that are, you know, maybe insensitive or kind of ridiculous. Uh, but right. I think that, I think that uh, there's the greatest thing about this is there's no like political lines here. There's no, uh, they call themselves, they say 4chan with Bloomberg or whatever. Right. right but but it, I mean, they had AOC tweeting supporting them today and Donald Trump Jr. Yeah. So it's, it's money is the great uniter, <laughs> I would say. But um, that I think that's the most important part about this is, is the, uh, the kind of spirit and the effect that this social media has given because it gives a power to kind of uh, the retail investor that that wasn't there before, and a, and a unity that that doesn't exist that didn't exist before. Because yeah, that's a really good point talking about the unity. Because I think it's really interesting that we're seeing this divide between class instead of through race or other things that have divided our society recently. And I think economics is the most clear one that makes sense. I mean, we talk about a K-shaped recovery with the economy, where people you see in the in the group they'll post, "Hey, you know." I was in terrible financial straits and this is helping me get out of it. And ever since coronavirus, the problem has been that, you know, these people who are working at these low paying jobs have just been broke and lost all their money. And while the rich people have just gotten so much richer and that's why they call it a K-shaped recovery because their assets and apples tripled, everything's gone up, up, up while the poor have gone worse, worse, worse. And now it seems like as money is the great uniter, GameStop is the great uniter, that these both sides are coming together and like, hey, we just want to make some money. We want to be like the rich who have really benefited from coronavirus and all this money, the Federal Reserve's flooding into the economy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think it's a good thing in the sense that, you know, uh, there was some some reporter on uh, CNBC or something that was kind of like, you know, do you think it's fair that these these you know armchair investors are are kind of taking all this money away from from these hedge funds? And I just think, what a ridiculous thing to say because uh, the way the way the way it's been is is kind of the uh, you know the, the 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 lower the lower class has been kind of just getting screwed, and and I think. I think this is a way that has that this is a way that's that's re-equalizing a very small bit of the wealth. Like I'm not I'm not saying this is doing anything big. It's not it's a very small part of this big thing, but it's this kind of 
uh, I think it's the metaphor of it, which is more important, which is the, you know, seeing the posts of the people that are like, I can pay my mom's hospital bill now, you know, I can pay my college off. Uh, I think that that's, that's a really cool thing and a really amazing thing. And, and something that, uh, really encompasses, I think the good that that's being done here. Absolutely. Some of the things they've been saying, cause this is personal when you have your whole account going is, uh, war, the battle lines are drawn. The suits are trying to scare you into selling. Don't let these hedge fund managers and Wall Street elitists trick you into selling. Um, this isn't just about the money. This is war. Um, so this is just how far these people are into it. They're deep into it. And I don't know how they're going to break it. I don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of days, Trent. Yeah, we we all th- we all are holding on to this idea that, you know, we're playing by their rules. So they're going to play fair, but they might not. You know, so so we're we're hoping for for the best, but but I'm I'm gonna be watching and I'm uh, I'm gonna be holding I'm gonna be holding with all with all the Wall Street bets uh, people. So yeah, I mean these people are very powerful and they can definitely strike back. So I wouldn't be surprised. You know, Steve Cohn, who owns the Mets, he also founded Point Seventy Two, which is a hedge fund that loaned out a few billion to Melvin Capital. There's a report coming out that he's down fifteen percent now for the year because of that. So these are very powerful people. They've got big lobbying firms that can talk to the SEC, that can talk to NASDAQ. So we really don't know what's going to happen. It'll be really interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think whatever happens, um, you know, I'm happy to be a part of this. Uh, I, I, I would encourage anybody to like, you know, just buy one and see, see what <laughs> happens, you know? I think I think it, it's a it's a fun social experiment that that is doing some good for some people and and it's hurting some people in places they can't feel you know right like you say you say he's gonna lose fifteen percent this year and that's gonna hurt him not at all you know right I mean he has seventeen billion dollars <laughs> no I mean this is this has just become a microcosm of something so much bigger you know I texted you a few days ago that the Swiss Central Bank it prints the Swiss francs, right? It prints the money. It also buys Apple stock. So you're seeing that it buys Apple stock. It buys these different stocks. So a central bank is buying stocks. Um, We haven't seen that in the United States. We've seen the Federal Reserve buy out bonds and float the bond market up and buy Apple bonds, which is effectively stimulating Apple from just printing money. Um, so that's just such an epitome of these people who are suffering from COVID Mm -hmm. suffering. It's like a two tiered economy and people don't want that. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, I think, I think if the government stepped in and did something really wonky, you you know, I would put all my money into Bitcoin tape. You think that would be the spot that this would flow to? Do you think people would just flow out of the stock market if it went? Well, I think, yeah, well, I don't know, you know, obviously we're not going to, we're not going to create any gigantic, you know, scare, scary situation, but, but personally, like I'd be pissed and you know, it's, they can't, they can't regulate my Bitcoin, you know? Right. And do you think that cryptocurrencies, do you think that a lot of people on wall street bets, Hey, crypto has become a lot more attractive to me after some of the shenanigans we've seen today and yesterday. I think it's, I think it's a really interesting, uh, venture. And, and I mean, Wall Street bets has always kind of had crypto in 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 their sights, and I think uh, I'm just saying if if the government was going to do something wonky, I think there would be a push. There would be a push for because uh, uh, the decentralization of it, I think, is the biggest attractor, especially Definitely. if something like that happened. And if not, I could see Wall Street bets rolling around on different stocks for some time, but I still think crypto will have its day in the next year or so with them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, mean- I think the most interesting thing I saw was silver, mm-hmm. which I don't know if you've seen the threads on silver on there, but silver is the most shorted thing in the world is now my understanding. <laughs> and so they're shorting silver in the banks. The, the problem we talked about this trend is that if you do too good a job of this, you can crash the actual economy, not just Melvin Capital. So if Wall Street Bets does too good of a job, they'll take out the whole system. So I think something has to come because Citadel, which is one of the top hedge funds in the world, they loaned out to Melvin Capital along with Point72 and Steve Cohn, who owns the Mets. Um, if they take down those guys, then it starts, the banks start to, everyone starts to go like 2008. And people on Wall Street bets say they want a war and they want blood, but they don't want to take out the guys that 
give them the unemployment check. I, I don't want to get yeah, too they don't political, wanna, they but don't you don't want to take down the whole system. Yeah, they don't want to break the the actual system. I don't think anybody's trying to because in if that well, were that's to happen, what could happen with silver, but it could also <laughs> you know go out. It can short squeeze. My understanding is from twenty five to a thousand. Uh, I think that'd be awesome. I mean, much, I like silver in a much more just like logical way. Like it could actually have a fair value of a thousand. Whereas GameStop, they're pumping it; it's not going to stay up there forever. Who yeah. knows? Maybe it'll stay up there like Tesla, but I'm not sure. Hey, I mean, the intrinsic value of silver, Tesla, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so you I could know. probably use silver for more things than used game consoles, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe more than Tesla too. Yeah, true, true. All right, anything else? What else do we need to touch on? Um, let's see. I just think it's going to be a, a wild couple days, you know, and, and when are you yeah. going to get some sleep? When are you waking so, up tonight? It's 10 30. I'm probably going to take a nap for a couple hours and wake up at one and then go again. And maybe when does early tonight. trading open? 1am for, for us. So three or four, four on the East coast. Yeah. Four on the East coast. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be a wild few days man i can't believe it i'm glad you're able to hop on with all that lack of sleep <laughs> yeah I, hey i love being here i love talking to you uh, thanks yeah it's me. exciting so i hope everyone's able to think about just how crazy everything's been with gamestop and think about the larger social implications we'll be back soon thanks for listening